Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Friday Reads video. Um, yeah. Um, I, actually, I didn't know what song I was singing, so I was just doing notes, and then I realized that they were going all over the place, so apologies for that. No, but this is, um, I'm really excited, and for the first time in um, some time, I'm really, like, kind of pumped up about um, what I'm reading, um, which is good. Because we all go through, like, your slumps and your ups and your downs and all that stuff. But um, the thing that really got me out of my funk, my, my reading funk, so we will say, is um, I was listening to a podcast that's um, hosted by one of the friends of the channel, Um it's called the uh, Chrononauts podcast, and it um, it has really, really hit its stride. Um, but I was just sitting there, and it's funny because um, you know these little things. I was on my phone. I was just sitting there, and a lot of times um, my podcast app. Um, will notify me when a podcast I like has a new episode. But for like, seriously, the last like probably three months, it hasn't sent me any notifications of anything. And I was just sitting there and then all of a sudden I get this bleep and the thing comes up and it's like, um, HP Lovecraft and weird tales. And I'm like, beg your pardon. And, um, I went and checked it out and man, the Chrononauts guys, let me actually turn this down, um, and lady, sorry, um, just did a great job talking about, um, Lovecraft's life, work, reception, um, his influence on today, um, they reviewed, uh, Dagon, and what I liked more than anything about the whole thing is that they spent a good chunk of time talking about the publication Weird Tales. So they just killed it, killed it, killed it, killed it. And so um, that just got my fire burning and it got me going. So highly, highly recommend it. So um, look for Chrononauts. Um, on your podcast thingies. Um, and then I just started going through um, a bunch of their episodes that I've missed and writing down a bunch of stuff that I want to read. And um, they had uh, a great um, William Hope Hodgson episode. Um, so, and with him... <clears throat> I read one of his uh, sea stories and um, I was looking and looking and looking for more and um, I was trying to find a paperback um, collection when I was going out to all the weird little bookstores. But now that I'm here, I think I'm going to go hit up um, the Iliad in the last bookstore and see if I could find anything there. But, um, so that was pretty cool. Um, let's see what else. They did this, uh, awesome <clears throat> Jules Verne episode, um, that was like Jules Verne writing Edgar Allan Poe fan fiction. If that sounds amazing, it was. Um, then there were all of these, uh, there was this episode about women who wrote, um, like weird fiction in the um, 1800s, like at the turn of the century kind of thing. Um, and that was awesome. There was just so much good stuff. So like my, my TBR is um, quite large now. But um, <clears throat> what this did was it got me thinking, I'm like, huh, 
What was the last Cthulhu Mythos video I did? I should do another one. So, here we are, and we're going to be talking about um, Dreams in the Witch House. Now, um, this is one of those um, stories that I never really... This was never one of my favorites. I read it probably once or twice and kind of just um, walked away from it. And probably because I always assumed it was one of his dream cycle um, stories because of the title. And I'm not like a big witchy guy, so um, just the title made it never really jump out at me. But I was looking at the chronology of, like, what Cthulhu Mythos um, stories would go in what order and everything. And I'm like, oh, this one should fit in there. So um, I'm like, okay, well, crap, like, now it's time to do that. And so I went into it um, with not the greatest enthusiasm but this story, if you like Lovecraft at all, this story has everything you could want in it. <clears throat> like, if you're into the Dream Cycle stuff, this has some weird shit like that in it. If you're into um, the Mythos stuff, you have the Necronomicon, you have Nyarlathotep, you have... Um, Azathoth, you have all that stuff in it. If you're into his Arkham stuff, it's about a guy who's a student at a Missacatonic University. And um, it even, if you're into the New England aspect of it, um, the backstory of this goes back to the Salem Witch Trials. So this story has everything that you could want out of a Lovecraft story. Now, it's weird because this story um, has really been panned by a lot of people who actually love Lovecraft. Um, some called it a magnificent failure. Some said it's one of his weakest uh, stories. Um, some people say that um, he doesn't really, like, finish anything. Like, there's just... A bunch of things that happen and um the criticism i will give it before i get into it is that um or maybe i should get into it and then give my criticism okay so anyway the story starts off with this um uh math physicist student um who is going to the university and he rents the attic room out of this house that's known as the witch house um, because of its uh, torrid history and weird things that go on there and he's like I don't care you know whatever but then we find out that um, he actually has been studying the Necronomicon and the Book of Ibon, and um, Nameless Cults, and all of these um, Lovecraft Circle um, books that he shouldn't be reading. So much so that his professors are telling him he's not allowed to do that anymore, because some of his ideas are just getting too crazy. And that is um, <clears throat> something that comes up a lot in Lovecraft's work. So... While he's there, um, he notices um, that uh, rat holes keep coming up into the walls and stuff. And he keeps asking the guy, to the landlord, to um, you know, put poison out and put stuff in, whatever. <clears throat> so he's doing all this stuff. And then um, he notices that um, he starts sleepwalking and doing all this shit. And that's getting weird. And then there's this glowing light that comes at night and um, a horrible old crone face that um, is coming to him at night. And then the rat that finally comes out of the wall, this rat, 
has the face of a man and little hands, like man hands, for rat feet. Okay? And this rat is known as Brown Jenkin. Now, if you know anything about the Salem Witch Trials, or if you even watched that show, Salem, you will know who Brown Jenkin is. Um, and then the old crone is actually a witch from the Salem Witch Trials who escaped prison. Um, and her name is Keziah Mason. Keziah Mason. So anyway, Brown Jenkin and Keziah Mason come to Gilman um, every night. And um, they're doing something. And all of these like superstitious people who live in the building are like freaking out because the 1st of May is coming. And that's some um, like spooky holiday for some reason. And um, long story short, this like the stuff that is happening to him, like he'll go to sleep. And then he'll be um, awoken by all of this stuff. And then he'll start seeing these weird shapes floating in the room um, and changing shape into um, geometrical messes that don't make sense to the human mind. Like, you know the Lovecraft tale. Like, you know how this goes. Um, and then he starts, like, what you would call maybe astral projection projecting and um but is it really that or is he actually traveling through hyperspace and wormholes um which again that's what's happening here um and then he starts going to places on far off planes of existence <clears throat> and um he goes to this place and he sees these the the fence of the balustrade has these things on him and he breaks one off and when he wakes up just like nancy in nightmare on elm street it's in his bed the thing that he pulled from what he thought was a dream and the thing what it is it's one of the elder things so if you remember at the mountains of madness the elder things that um, they found in antarctica one of these things um, he brought back with him now, this story takes place in 1927. That's not when it was. It was written in 31 or 32. But the story takes place in 1927, I think. And um, all of the stuff that he's seeing, and he's talking to the professors and stuff about it, um, this is happening a little bit before the expedition to the, to the Antarctic. Um, that Miskatonic University does to have at the Mountains of Madness even happen in the first place. So that's kind of interesting. So all of this stuff goes and goes and all this stuff happens and we have some really amazing things, but um, halfway through the story, this moment happens where um, Keziah and Brown Jenkin bring Nyarlathotep to Gilman um, in his room. <clears throat> and she says he needs to write his name in Azathoth's book and we need to give him a new name. So, because he's, he's found too much stuff out. He needs to be a part of this now. So they're trying to pull him in, which I thought was a really interesting... Um, little tidbit i'm trying to think of any i'm sure there is but like i couldn't think of it last night i'm like is there another lovecraft story where like i mean and you could say like oh well the whisper in the dark and all that stuff and maybe that's kind of the same but i don't know this just felt different and um so at that point i'm like oh okay this the story's almost over. And then I looked, I'm like, oh, we're only halfway through this? What the heck's going on now? So this thing's 14,000 words, okay? And at this point, I felt like any other Lovecraft story could have ended right there. He could have went, um, 
And then Nyarlathotep was at the window. Oh, the window, the window. Like, you know that, you know that one. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, shit, where's this going to go now? And it just kind of kept going and going and going. And um, then there's like a big kind of battle thing at the end because, um, and here's where, I mean, spoiler territory is already here, whatever. A baby is kidnapped, an infant. And um, every year around the 1st of May, an infant is taken from the town and sacrificed to whatever thing happens on May 1st. And so the night of um, April 30th into May 1st, um, and some other cool stuff happens with some muddy footprints. Um, I'll let you see that. But um, Gilman wakes up and he is in his room or the room above his room and the baby is unconscious on the altar and Keziah is has this knife in her hand and Brown Jenkins is sitting on the table licking his lips and rubbing his hands and they're chanting something back and forth and um, Keziah has Gilman hold this bowl this silver bowl that is going to um, like catch the blood from the baby or something and at the last minute Gilman couldn't go through with it and so Gilman starts wrestling with um, Keziah they're going back and forth and he's strangling her and there's this moment with a cross and that's something else we could talk about maybe um, because this is the first time that like any kind of uh, like Christian imagery would have an effect on anyone from the mythos world or whatever. But um, she sees his cross and kind of freaks out for a second, um, which gives him the opportunity to stra- start strangling her instead of him her strangling him or whatever. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And um, so that's going on. And then he defeats the woman and he looks, but Brown Jenkins had already slit the baby's wrist with his razor sharp teeth and drained all the blood out of the baby. So all this happens. He hears a loud noise that no one else hears. It ruptures his eardrums. He's deaf now. And then the, the true horror um, everyone in the building's kind of keeping an eye on him because they're worried about him and he's laying in bed and he's laying there and then he starts screaming and the sheet that's covering him starts changing color from the middle and when they pull the blanket back Brown Jenkins jumps out of this hole in his chest and um, runs with its little covered in blood and it's a little uh, rat man hands making marks on the floor and runs into the wall and it turns out he had burrowed into Gilman and ate his heart horrific and then like we're reading fucking Return of the King it just keeps going for a bit longer and tells you more about the house, more about what happens later, more about um, his buddy's school career. And it's just like, I don't think this is a bad story at all, but I think you could cut at least 4,000 words out of this and still have it be good, probably more. Um, Like Lovecraft is very wordy and his prose is very purple. Um, but this was really cool. And it's funny because there are in my big, um, annotated Lovecraft, the one that, um, was it Klinger? Uh, I can't remember. Um, it's over there. Um, but like they were talking about how some mathematicians and physicists are saying that like the like science behind what Lovecraft theorizes in here is complete bullshit. 
And others are like, oh, oh, no, no. Here, hold my beer. Hold my scholastic beer while I tell you that this is actually quite amazing and blah, 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 blah. Um, Fritz Leiber was saying that, like, um, Lovecraft was actually talking about time travel and um, how how he words it and goes through it here is actually how, like, traveling through hyperspace and wormholes would be um, and all this other stuff. So it's really interesting just for that alone. But this story has everything. Um, if you are a fan of the craft. So um, anyway, we're back with the Cthulhu Mythos. So I think what I'm going to do, because now I'm like all, oh yeah, I want to go back and do the Conan videos too. So instead of doing, um, like overloading myself and doing a Lovecraft video and a Conan video and all this other stuff, I think I'm going to do one a week. So next week I'll probably do a Conan video um, or I'll do another Lovecraft video. I'll kind of put it up in the air like that. Um, and then um, the read-alongs that I was talking about doing um, are going to be a little bit different, but we'll talk about that in a different time. So other than that, um, that's it. So if you have any questions or comments about this, go ahead and leave it down below. If you've listened to the Chrononauts podcast, let me know down below. Tell me what you think about it. Um, make sure to go over to um, my website, IHateMountWall.com. Um, look at the Patreon. Get hooked up with that because there's going to be a lot more stuff going on over there. Um, including um, a bunch of free things to have. Um, and then, let me see, what else was there? What else was there? Oh, and then we'll just talk about the rest of that stuff next time. So um, have a good Friday, have a good weekend, read well, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.